last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week, a California social worker who lied to the court to snatch a kid costing the county $4.9 million in a judgment is promoted and now trains new workers. A bill that was put forth to open up California's dependency court proceedings to the public fails in the assembly. In Texas this week, falsely accused parents are waiting years to have their names cleared from the child abuse register. And in Colorado, foster parents and others who have access to the kids' personal information are stealing the kids' identities to apply for credit cards, set up utility bills, and apply for loans. In the gold mine of Florida this week, the child protective industry is enjoying the highest number of calls to the hotline in a decade. The state wants to cut tuition funding for the 2% of former foster kids who do make it to college. DCF reopens the investigation into the death of Gabriel Myers and now blames the 7-year-old's foster family for the drug-induced suicide. And a bill requiring drug testing for welfare recipients passes the House. In Georgia this week, one out of three foster kids are on psych meds, sparking a review aimed at reducing the number of foster kids on antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and stimulants. In Illinois, foster kids are running away left and right. And in Maine, the governor signs a bill closing the state's child porn loophole, which prevented prosecution of people who viewed child porn on the internet unless they downloaded the images onto their computers. After a public outcry on the internet, State Senator Bruce Caldwell of Michigan drops his proposal to allow foster children only to get clothes from second-hand thrift stores. The state of New Jersey is paying for its sins of the past after it is revealed that the state has paid out 50 $51.7 million in lawsuits brought on by former foster children who were abused in state's care since 1996. Ohio implements a new alternative response approach to child protection in a pilot program aimed at providing services to needy families rather than ripping them apart. And a school of social work in St. Louis, Missouri is attempting to redefine the definition of poverty in the USA. A movement is going on to try to ban spanking all across South Asia. The Russian government plans to start a mass drug testing campaign of its youth. And in Spain, a law student tries to sue his parents for $588 a month allowance and ends up being ordered to move out and get a job instead. In Australia this week, three sisters sue the government for $1 million after they were sexually abused by a foster child who was placed in their home. The Australian government is considering state-run parenting classes, and a 13-year-old girl becomes pregnant while in state care. In Canada, a new study claims that child abuse has altered children's brains. Ontario makes it easier for the child protective industry to adopt your children out. In Canada, bans a teenager from entering the country because he's autistic. In England this week, Dr. Dickhead Southall, who falsely accused a mother of drugging her 10-year-old son, may be struck off again as he faces another disciplinary hearing. And a professional horse trainer flees to Ireland after finding out the British social workers were planning to snatch her unborn child from the hospital and put it up for adoption because the new mother spoke at a meeting in Parliament. In entertainment news this week, actor Nicolas Cage gets busted for drunk driving drops his kid during the traffic stop and will end up being investigated by Child Protective Services. And the moms of MTV's hit reality show 16 and Pregnant are being tracked by the tabloids because inquiring minds want to know. The California social worker who was busted for child porn goes to a sexual treatment rehab facility. A social worker from Florida gets probation and community service for falsifying documents. And a caseworker from Georgia is indicted on theft and racketeering charges after stealing child support funds intended for custody custodial parents. In New Jersey, three teenagers who live in a group home are charged with robbery after breaking into the director's private residence and stealing about $1,000 worth of cash and gold coins. The ex-Oklahoma cop slash foster parent is now being held without bail on a 37-count indictment of sexual abuse charges against foster kids in his care. The Oklahoma County judge who stands accused in an adoption scam is claiming that the county prosecutors have a personal vendetta against her, which they deny. And a foster molester from Pennsylvania is held on all charges in regards to the rape of a foster child numerous times for a period of three years. In Nebraska this week, a family is left looking for answers as to why their son was killed in a foster home. And in Louisiana, a three-year-old girl dies from blunt force trauma while in foster care, and a gag order is issued so that nobody can talk about it. A mother from New Mexico says the state wrongfully snatched her kids after the judge ordered them returned to her the next day. And finally tonight, a homeless mother in Connecticut is accused of theft of services for enrolling her kid in the wrong school district. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.